Hello fellow survivors and welcome to a science video of the long dark, kind of anyway. What we're going to do today is we're going to see how you can survive with just your starting gear and how far you can stretch very limited resources across difficulties. The way we're going to do this is we're going to spawn in transfer pass in the far territory and then head straight to the depot that's there and then we're basically going to survive as long as possible in this depot with only our starting gear and the gear we find inside this depot and we are never allowed to leave. And then the question is how far can you survive with just your starting gear and some limited resources around you and is it modified by difficulty? The reason we're doing this in transfer pass is just because it's easier to standardize across difficulties this way. The spawn is the same for all difficulties and it's, the loot is very reduced as well in all difficulties. So it's easy to compare them. Well, if we go to other regions, you can get very strong spawns on low difficulties and very tough ones on the uh, higher ones. So it's just easy to compare them doing it this way. And in this video, you'll see me do exactly this. I'm going to go start on Pilgrim and go all the way up to Interloper and try and survive with pretty much just the starting gear and you'll see how long I survive and the answer of how long I can survive might surprise you. Anyway, let's get to it and see how long we can survive in just one starting location. Let's get to it. Hello fellow survivors and welcome to a special video where we're just going to compare resources that are available in your starting location across difficulties. How long can you survive by basically doing nothing across the difficulties? And the way we're going to do this, we're going to have a test across all four dis uh, difficulties and see how long they survive in each. And we're going to have the same starting location. So let's go into survival and we're going to choose each of these four and compare them in kind. We're going to start with the easiest and move our way up to Interloper. Now there's a couple of things that's a little bit tricky here. So in Interloper you can't choose your spawn so we'll have to amend that but we'll see about that later. And <clears throat> the other thing is when you choose where to spawn, even on Pilgrim where you have indoor locations allowed, in um, on Pilgrim and Voyager you can spawn on an indoor location. Even in places like Ash Canyon, you tend to spawn outdoors rather than in Anglis Den or something like that. And in other regions like Plasma Valley, you could get very strong indoor spawns like the farmhouse and that sort of thing. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's not really comparable across difficulties. So what we're going to do is we're going to pr uh, primarily focus on your starting location. And the easiest way to, to do that and uh, focusing on what you spawn with and what's immediately around you is to choose the far territory instead and go to transfer pass. Because if you spawn in transfer pass, all the difficulties spawn in the same place, which is at the entrance. And then what we'll do is just, once you spawn, you have to make your way to the depot right away. And then the rule is we can never leave the depot. You only have the resources available that you spawned in and the uh, resources inside the depot. And then that's it. So how long can you survive in that case? So let's just see how that goes. We'll start with Pilgrim. Bouncer Pass. No feats for this. <clears throat> and then we'll call it Pilgrim. Uh, Pilgrim Transfer Pass. The first thing, we're just going to sprint straight away over to transfer uh, to the, uh, the train depot. We're not going to use any sprint tricks. We're just going to hold on... Uh, Shift and run all the way there. We're not going to pick up anything along the on the on the way. We're only going to be allowed to loot what's inside the actual uh, train station, and that's it. Then we'll just see how long we can survive. Now, there's very little resources in the train station at all, but that's fine. That's kind of the point. But if you were to spawn in other regions, like say Pleasant Valley, and you go to the farm, you can survive there for a very, very long time. You just gotta manage your resources. Of course, this particular region doesn't have a bed, but uh, that's okay. 
you do have bedroll still, except for an interloper, where well, that's going to be an issue. But we'll see how we get on. Now, we're not going to get cold by the time we get there, but we're just going to have the rule that we're going to sprint all the way there. That's basically going to be our rule. And we're not going to loot anything at all, except for our... Uh, what's inside, which isn't much. There's not much in there. You could, on low difficulties, easily survive and transfer paths because you spawn with matches and there's a wood and uh, ptarmigans and rabbits around, so you can probably survive it for some time if you wanted to. Alright, so here we are. We're not going to loot anything outside either, but we will loot the stuff that's inside. So we'll go inside, and now that we set foot inside, we can never actually go outside. So here we are on Pilgrim. First things first, let's see what's in our inventory. So we got Accelerant, we got Newspaper, 12 matches, we got stuff, and we got uh, quite a bit of clothing. We got a granola bar, and that's it. And we got a flare. We got a recycled can and we got a bedroll. And that's pretty much it. So let's see what we got around here. So we got, we're gonna pick everything up. We got some more stacks of papers, stacks of papers. I wonder who owns this stuff. Parker, sweatshirt. We don't really need any of this stuff because we're, we're warm already. Uh, actually, no, we're actually cold. We are minus four in here. So let's see how we get on. Gold socks, baseball cap. Uh, is that worse? Better? Yeah. Old socks. Use print. Charcoal. Use print. More matches. Nobody needs this anymore. Book. Sweatshirt. Sewing kit. More books. Stacks of papers. Anything else around here? Uh, we, can, we have this broom. We can't break it down though. More matches. Book, book, uh, toilet, we got water in the toilet, we got a piece of cloth, two pieces of cloth really, and what else, and we got, we got more stacks of papers, we got grape soda, we got newsprint, another hat, and I think that's it, and this chair, which we can't break down, some chairs you can break down without the hatchet, this is not one of them. And there's also this cardboard box here for Tinder. Alright. And then I think that's it actually. I think we got everything now. There isn't anything else, is there? There's this bucket which we can't break down. This we can't break down. And I think that's it really. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now we can't really leave here. So let's see how far we can survive here on Pilgrim, just being in here. So it's actually cold, minus four. Well, we got two cloth, and we also have some excess uh, uh, stuff that we don't need. And we found a sewing kit as well. So we can actually uh, repair some of this stuff. We can uh, harvest it and uh, repair. Getting cold, but not particularly difficult, really. So let's see, uh, what should we repair? So this is 67. If I repair this, it gets quite strong. But I think I'm going to repair this wool scarf. It'll give me a degree warmth. There <coughs> we go, 82. Uh, that's good. So we can actually harvest this one in that case. The sweatshirt. And then uh, 100, 100, these are terrible, that's low, 65, okay, let's repair that, the uh, gloves. There we are, and that's pretty much it, but we still have three pieces of cloth, so we might as well repair something. Uh, we could try repairing the parka to see if we succeed. Yeah, we, we did succeed. And we have uh, one piece of cloth left. 
and now it's minus two, so it's not nearly as bad. And food-wise, we only really have these two things, but we do have loads of water in the sense that we can make water. And we should actually maybe do that, not right now, actually. I think we should pass time. Uh, no, actually, let's uh, let's uh, start a fire. So we already have a book and matches. Uh, we might as well use the... No, we're not going to use the accelerant, are we? Do we need the accelerant? Uh, no, we got carbon matches, so we'll just use, use that. Let's go. Well, I could have used the flare, actually. That would have worked just as fine. I'm mean, just going to camp in here. All right, so we got a fire going. We don't have much wood at all, just some books. And I'm going to use all of these right away. So we're going to put this down, the can, and make water. And uh, we don't have any more wood than that. So we're just going to have to use all of it, really. Uh, we're not going to let this boil because we found these uh, tablets. So we're just going to use it until it's uh, melted. It doesn't look like we can get a lot of water from this, actually. We're using what we can. Can't burn tinder, unfortunately. Like that, and then one more, and I think that's as far as it goes, actually. And last book goes on. And that's all there is to it. Now, if we were allowed to loot outside, we would get some more stuff. We're just going to stay in here, and then that's it. Let's see how long we survive. Melt it, and then we'll take that, and then we'll just start again, see how long that goes. And then we'll have the two liters there. We're going to use these purification tablets to get a couple liters of water. Let's see how long this goes. Good map. Why not? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, we got uh, 38. All right, that's fine. Let's just use one more of these for that. So now we have our resources, which are very, very limited. But we have basically this 250, 300 calories. Yeah, okay, and some water. So basically, we got to wait this out as long as we can, really. And we're going to do that by pretty much just passing time. And uh, we are cold. Well, that's okay. We can stay cold for a little while. And we're barely cold, so therefore I'm not really in a hurry. Calories is dropping relatively slow, but we're going to go hungry uh, for as long as we can, really. It's only minus two because of the repairs we did. And it's Pilgrim. As you can see, we're not doing too bad, really. I'm going to wait before we drink some water. Uh, I would say, let's drink some water now. A little bit like that, maybe. That's enough. And then just keep passing time. Need to find a place to rest. And then we're going to heal a little bit until we get too tired. There we are, we're very tired now. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to have another, we're not going to, we're actually going to not, we're going to let ourselves lose some health here. Because we have the resources to heal back up quite a bit. So we're going to wait until we're pretty much just hungry. Pretty much. There's no point drinking because it's not going to heal us at this point. It's going to pass time until uh, we are... How much can we heal? So we got 200, 550. Something's making me feel really tired. 550. And you're only on Pilgrim. Wow, you hardly burn any calories at all with 550. But we can heal all the way back up on Pilgrim. So we're just going to pass time until we are almost dead, actually. And then go from there. So there's passing time in here now. We're going to let all the meters run down. And we're just camping it out. 
Got a blizzard outside, but it doesn't matter. The real question is really how this is going to fare compared to uh, Voyager, really. <clears throat> it's getting cold, so let's use this and pass time in the sleeping bag instead. So now we're going to warm up instead. I'm going to wait until I'm as low condition as possible before I do anything. Until I'm almost dead. Go back up. Just to maximize, because you can heal a ton on this difficulty. Okay, we're almost dead. Alright, so that's, that's enough. Let's do that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to eat this granola bar. We're going to drink this uh, Stacy's drink. We're going to drink some water. And we're going to sleep for 12 hours. We're going to pick this up and sleep for 12 hours. And then you'll see how much else health we got. And there we are, look. We've already started for 2.8 days. And uh, <clears throat> we're still okay. We're actually still healing. All I can think about is... And then we're going to pass time some more. I mean, there's nothing else we can really do, really. We're going to be hungry soon. In hindsight, I could have maybe have uh, eaten one of them and then the other. But uh, <clears throat> because you heal so much, it doesn't matter. Hey, an Aurora. Hello. That's cool. Anything special in here during an Aurora? I don't think I haven't been in there. During an Aurora, does the toilet light up? No. Lights are on, though, so that's nice. Now, obviously, it's a bit of luck what you can do in here in terms of what loot you find, but there isn't much really to find. Let's just do one more Die, look here if there's too. anything we missed. Uh, I don't think there really is much, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, well. Other than that, there isn't really much to do, really. We can do some more repairs, but it doesn't really achieve anything. And we can make some more Tinder out of these if we want, just to do something. We got a lot of Tinder. Oh, it's easy to do it here, I think. Look at that. So a load of Tinder, so it's interesting that we have so many matches on this difficulty, so much Tinder. There's no real wood, really. Clothing's fine. Water's fine. So we now have to basically keep hydrated. So the only thing that really kills us now is hunger, but it's roughly 1%. So we can, uh, we can actually just pass time until we get cold. Then we'll bring the bedroll out and we're just going to use the water because now there's no point saving the water because we can't sleep again. So we can't actually recover health. So now we're on borrowed time. We can still sleep though. Uh, uh, so if I don't sleep, I take 2% damage per hour. Right. Uh, let me think about that for a second. So if I, if I decide to sleep for 12 hours, I will take 12% uh, damage doing that. However, um, I will then take 1% afterwards. So I will, if I don't sleep, I will lose, I will lose 20, I will lose 24% in that time. So it's actually worth it to sleep, even if you are starving, I think, but you'll survive a bit longer. And yeah, that would make sense. Let me just double check my math there. Do you calculate, calculate, calculate. <laughs> I mean, I think that's true. So here, like now we're tired. If we now, uh, now we lose roughly 1% health in, in fatigue and 1% in hunger per hour, roughly. So in 12 hours time, we will then lose 24%. But if I sleep, then we'll only lose 12%. And uh, because we are sleeping, but then the next 
my energy is going forward the next few hours i'll continue to lose one percent per hour instead of two because i'm rested if, if that makes sense I, I hope i'm making sense basically even though we're not going to heal and we're going to take damage by sleeping we are mitigating damage because we are not taking fatigue damage they're only taking hunger damage and we're mitigating the damage dealt by being tired if that makes sense so we're almost up to four days already <laughs> And we're getting this affliction. I don't know if you've ever seen this affliction. It doesn't show... Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't say anything, but it says here. Uh, this here is a fatigue drain. It happens when you haven't eaten in a long time. I think it's when you haven't eaten in 24 hours in the game. You start losing your energy uh, because you basically don't have an energy surplus in your body to keep you going. So you effectively become tired more often. It doesn't really have a name. It's just something that happens when you don't eat. You only really see it if you starve yourself for a very, very long time. Okay, uh, we're going to again pass time. <clears throat> and we could maybe sleep one more time, it depends. Um, but because we're losing, you can see we're losing energy because we don't have any food. It's only going to keep draining it, so eventually we won't be able to sleep for 12 hours anyway. So we're going to have to mitigate it uh, slower than that. The purification tablets were a bit lucky. If I didn't have that, I would have uh, roughly a liter and a bit less water. So that was a bit lucky, but even so, we would still be alive at this point, but barely. <clears throat> and we're just going to keep going until I'm exhausted and we'll, we'll probably sleep again. And you can see see the fatigue meter draining. See how much it's draining because we have no energy, we have no food, so the stomach is is uh, the body is giving in. Yeah, and now we have a uh, almost full drain here, and I think now we're ex they're exhausted. Okay, so now we're going to sleep again, uh, but we can only sleep or we can we can sleep twelve hours, but I think it achieves nothing. <laughs> You're not usually in a situation where you have to sleep, <laughs> and you are drained so uh let's just drink this to the max and sleep i think it's six hours yeah sleep six hours you should t you should take six percent damage doing that yeah and i think that's as far as it goes if i try to sleep now it, it does actually allow me to do it okay it's just that it's, i think it will, the energy level will stay there it won't actually increase I think. Yeah, see, it, it didn't really achieve anything with me doing it. Uh, but yeah. And it's going to keep passing time. It will soon, we're soon going to die. Uh, we're just losing health there. The energy bar is just, it keeps draining. <laughs> but uh, we're still alive. Uh, we're on day six, I think. I think we're on day six, yeah. So we're not doing too bad, but we are dead very soon. So it seems like it's capped, this drain. It doesn't seem to go further than down to here, halfway. And it doesn't seem to go any further than that. Uh, now, uh, let's drink again. Let's quickly check what time. We're on day six. Day six, yeah. Drink, and then we have to sleep. I don't think we should need to sleep six hours. We can sleep, uh, let's sleep three hours, shall we? Yeah, that's fine. And uh, we're still alive. Let's keep passing time. And you can see, so the point of this is to show how far you can survive on the lower difficulties with like extremely limited resources. And uh, now we're starting to uh, sway. Oh, they removed this mechanic, yeah. Before you could just grab this. And then uh, you wouldn't say anymore they removed that. Did they remove the campfire too? Let me just quickly see. Yeah, they did, okay. I know I said I wouldn't leave, but, you know. <coughs> but you can do this. You can do this and then click on it when you want to move. Okay, so uh, we have maybe one more hour left in us. 
Why don't we sleep for one hour? Sleep until death. <laughs> So five days, 14 hours, and it looks like we're probably going to get five days, maybe 16 hours, something like that. And, uh, yeah, seems, seems likely. And there we go, the moon is about there, so yeah. There we go, and we died. <clears throat> but that was pretty good, so the point there, as you can see, we survived a really long time with basically no resources. So if you ever struggle to survive on Pilgrim, just know that you can survive a really long time with basically nothing. Almost six days. Almost. I, f I don't know exactly, but it was roughly uh, five, hour, five days and 16 hours. Something like that. Okay, let's do Voyager next. All right, so next we're going to do Voyager. However, instead of choosing Voyager, we're actually going to do a custom and choose Voyager. The reason is that I want it to be the same across all difficulties. And in Pilgrim, I didn't really think of it at the time. In Pilgrim, we spawned at noon and the starting weather was clear. Uh, and that's it. So let's do the same thing in all of the difficulties. It's always noon and it's clear. And then that's it. That way we can more easily compare them. Other than that, it's the same. So we're going to do, we can just I want to make sure here, uh, noon and clear. So this is Voyager. Let's do the same thing. File territory, transfer pass. Mail, whatever, doesn't matter. And this time it's Voyager, transfer pass. Let's see. And off we go. And it's already colder than it was on Pilgrim. <laughs> Pilgrim is very forgiving, as you saw. You survived for a really long time with basically no resources at all. And uh, yeah, it's quite uh, different. There is uh, uh, also, th there there are a couple of weird things. Uh, actually, on I think on Pilgrim, I believe your energy meter actually drains faster than some of the other difficulties, I believe. Uh, but, but other than that, it's, uh, it's more forgiving. And on Interloper, uh, everything is much, much worse. Except, I think your fatigue meter drains slightly slower than the other difficulties. So, you, the Interloper, you basically have a little bit more energy. But everything else is much worse. And uh, that's pretty much it. Alright, it's the same deal, and we'll see what the loot is and what we got and everything, and I assume it'll be roughly the same. Now, of course, it's 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 random. It, 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 it There will be variation, because it, it changes depending on the run. So I did it, before I did this uh, recording, I did a test, and I spawned on Pilgrim, and I, I had on Pilgrim, in my inventory, I had, I think it was a grape soda, pork and beans, and a granola bar. Uh, so that's a lot more food than the run I just did. And if I had had that, I probably would have survived another day or maybe even two more days. So uh, there is some variation there across the, the run. So ideally, we should do this multiple times and then average it out. But I don't really want to do that. So we're just going to do it as a case study, one time sample size of one and see how we get on. If I was a real scientist, which uh, I am by trade, <laughs> I would do it multiple times, but uh, that it just takes too long uh, and it's not really that necessary. Okay, first things first, we got 10 were colder than on Pilgrim. What have we got in inventory? We got, we spawned with a piece of wood. That's big. That was not there on Voyager. We have matches as usual and we have that newsprint. These don't really matter. Clothing is all right. This is this is good. That's very good. Oh, this is pretty good. Also, lots of calories here. And uh, <clears throat> one of those bedroll fishing tackle. Fishing tackle actually spawning there is pretty big because we can then repair clothing as well. That's pretty big. And let the calorie drain when you sleep is going to be different. You know, it's sixty. So if I sleep for twelve hours, I burn seven hundred and twenty calories. While on Pilgrim was 450. 
So sleeping a full 12 hour is going to be more costly on this difficulty. All right, let's the looting begin. So we got more stacks of papers. We got a cotton Stop scarf, which we'll put on, of course. What else? Nothing in there. And we got stacks of papers, stacks of papers. We got books, books and water. That's lucky, isn't it? Uh, suitcase. Socks. Hey, sewing kit as well. Handy. Terrible socks. Break down the cardboard box. Uh, charcoal, you like. Use for old and also cardboard matches. <clears throat> nice. More books. What about here? That looks Sports amazing. vest. All right, that's pretty good. Put that on. Uh, and then I think that's it around here, I believe. Okay. Do you have matches here too? Yeah, we do. Voyager also has matches in here. How about that? More books. And how about here? We got, again, a towel, which we'll grab. And totally, we got more water, I think, than it was in uh, Pilgrim. And then finally here we got more water. Wow. Have too much water. And that's true. <laughs> Palaclava. I mean, wow. Okay. That's a big one. And we got mag lens, which won't do anything, and painkillers, which won't do anything. So that was interesting. So on Voyager, we got a few things that were better. We got a little bit better clothing, actually, to the effect. It was still cold, though, minus three. But we did get uh, clothing. And we also spawned with the firewood, so we have uh, one of those. And we have six books, while on Pilgrim, I think we had five books. So that's different. But on Pilgrim, we got those uh, tablets, which we don't have here. But we did find a bit more water. So, and we also have a bit more calories, but we burn them faster. So, all right, so let's do the same thing. So let's see how far we can survive. And we also used accelerant, because we're only going to do this once. So let's go. All right, so let's imme like it immediately start doing that. And I could eat this, the beans, which achieves nothing right now, but... Uh, you might think then, well, then I can get another can, but no, uh, it will smash the can, so I won't get another can. And I wasted time talking. Okay, then we're going to put on our cedar wood, which we spawned, which, which was huge. Pass some time. And pass time again. And uh, in hindsight, I suppose if I wanted to be a, a real scientist about this, I would just have all the characters spawn with the exact same loot. Uh, all the characters and all the difficulties spawn with the exact same loot which is easy to do with a mod so maybe we'll do that in a follow-up study see how far we can get everyone can spawn with uh you know half a liter of water and the granola bar or something like that and the same loot same with the loot and everyone has the same amount of resources how much can you survive in one place we'll see uh, maybe in another video that would be more scientific more accurate this is more of a non-comparative case study i mean it's comparative but there are variations in the data so it won't be perfect anyway there we are and then we'll also do this and we might do the thomasina trick to avoid having um unsafe water so that is um you just let some of this melt and then you let it boil after so this still has 16 minutes but if i pick it up now it's a little bit of water and then i can boil that small amount instead which takes four minutes and then it should be boiled <clears throat> and then we get the maximum amount of water there we go see and we can even do it again. Wait until there's embers. This doesn't just end, that is. Okay, and again. Let's see if we're getting a tiny bit more water doing it this way. Uh, drinkable water, that is. We can do it again. And this will last a little bit. This is a Thomasina trick, because this was popularized by a streamer called Thomasina. 
who you should check out on Twitch and YouTube. She's fantastic. And she did this in a run where she got down to, I think it was 1% health or 2% health. And she was dehydrated. And of course, you can't wait for the, the water to uh, boil because she'll, you'll die. So she did what I just did and got scraps of water and then maintained hydration that way. This is our emergency water. We'll drink it right at the end. All right, so we got quite a bit of water. And in order to recover health, we need... This is 750, 720. Uh, okay. And drinking this gives 250, this gives 600. So it's 850, but smashing this will reduce the calories. It will vary a lot. I think the most it's reduced by is 35 or something. Or something like that. So it could go down to, say, call it 400. In which case it'll be uh, 650, so it'll be just under, but it'd still be good. So we're going to do what we did last time now, we're just going to basically wait this out. However, we could uh, also repair while we're at it, we got some stuff, and we can repair it with our cloth. So we're even warmer, although warmth isn't really an issue because we have the bedroll, so we'll be fine either way. Let's harvest this. There we go, and let's, what else can we repair? I mean, it's mostly just good condition, all of it. There's not much to really repair. I guess we could repair this, so the socks are terrible. I mean, why not let's repair them for the sake of it, I guess. And uh, we could repair the hat, just because it gives us 0 0.2 warmth. Why not? Okay. And I guess that's probably it. Uh, there isn't really much more to it. So we got decent warmth here. And we're almost warm inside, but not quite. And then we do the same thing. We play the waiting game here. Minus one. So we're going to get cold. And as you can see, in the temperature meter here, this is a good comparison of the, the difficulties. You can see that even though it's minus one, while on Pilgrim it was minus two, my cold is draining much faster than on Pilgrim, despite it being warmer. So just the jump from Pilgrim to Voyager has a significant difference in terms of the cold, which is an issue, but we do have the bedroll. And we have an Aurora again. Hello. <coughs> Welcome back. Nice to see you. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. We're actually going to use the bedroll now and pass some time. So we warm up and we're going to do this until we're fatigued. And we're going to do like last time, we're going to pass time until we are almost dead. And then we're going to sleep for as long as we can. Uh, so we're just going to keep passing time. Pick this back up. Uh, the reason I want to pick it back up is because when you use the bedroll, this is 100% now, but when you use it, it you, you can actually reduce its condition as well. And when you reduce its condition, uh, it, it warms you up less. So let's just pass time until we're almost dead. That's the plan. And if you want to see, uh, there's a streamer called DH Dunn, who's also a YouTuber. You should check him out. He has a, a series called Will Stand Still, where he does interloper. He spawns an interloper and he doesn't move. He just lets Will stand there. And he does this and he writes his books while, uh, while Will stands there because he's an author. And I think the longest Will has survived by just standing there on the interloper is something like... Uh, at 30 minutes or something, which is equivalent to like 10 hours or something. Quite a bit. <clears throat> Are we getting cold? Maybe we should just do it now, actually. It's warm up a little bit. Okay, I think maybe now we can do this. So we're going to start by eating this uh, pork and beans, and we'll see how much we lose in terms of cold calories. My head feel thick. Oh, we hardly lost anything. 522, that's fantastic. And uh, we got quite a bit there, yeah. So, and we need 720. So we're going to drink nearly all of this, like about that much, and then have some water and save a little bit. And then we can sleep 12 hours, you know, slightly under. Let's drink a little bit more. Okay, not fair, whatever. Sleep for 12 hours. <coughs> And I think it will heal us almost all the way there. 
think you can heal 90% is the highest, I think. There you go, see? And uh, we'll do this, hydration, and we have a tiny amount left, there's 60 calories, something to eat. which is enough to sleep for one hour and heal, <clears throat> which will only heal us about 1%, but it's still 1%. And now it's the same thing, we're gonna pass time. And just do this until we're exhausted. And I think we'll uh, drink what's left. And uh, sleep the one hour. And now because we only sleep the one hour, I think we will, uh, we'll just do this as soon as we can, I think. So how about here? Uh, let's have a little bit of drink and then we'll do this and then we'll drink what's left and we'll sleep for one hour and we should actually heal here uh, about one percent or so all right and now we're just gonna mitigate damage with water for as long as we can and then we're going to do the same thing. Like if we get tired, we are going to sleep because we take less damage. It's the same across the difficulty as the actual damage output. So I'm taking 1% damage per hour now. And then when I'm tired, it'll be 2%. And if I'm dehydrated, it's uh, 4% because it's basically 1% per hour for hunger, 1% per hour for, uh, for fatigue. And... 2% per hour for dehydration and 20% per hour when you are cold. Past time. Warm back up. You see the bed warm from this is 4.9, so it's probably lost some condition. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, 98%, see? So it, it warms you less. Okay, <clears throat> let's keep uh, going. And once we're tired, here comes the uh, the drain meter. <laughs> and we're going to drink some water. You see, we're draining, uh, the water's draining also, uh, much, much faster. Something's making so me feel we're going to put, we're not going to put 12 hours, we're going to put, I think, 10 hours this time. Just because of the drain from being hungry. Yeah, we got three days, eight hours, so it's not that far off Pilgrim, really. But we are draining uh, 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 faster. And let's keep going. Uh, we're kind of running out of water soon. We will have a drink. But then I think we'll stop. Yeah, that's good. 69 is good, because you need 0.67 for a full full stomach of water. So let's see if we can save that for, for the next sleep. That would be good. Uh, let me take less damage, although I think it's the same actually. It doesn't make a difference because we're not healing anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter if we're dehydrated when we sleep or when we are awake, I suppose. Yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah I don't think it matters really. Except I think you use less water when you're... Yeah. <clears throat> there might be some minor nuances to this survival strategy that allows you to uh, to survive slightly longer with managing that stuff, but we're going to sleep now for four hours. Three days, 22, so we're almost up to four days. And let's just keep going. Uh, I think we will make it to four days, so when it's noon, it's four, so that's about noon. So now we have survived four days on Voyager by not moving, pretty much. Uh, so let's see how, how long, but I think we are on the edge of our rope here. You can see we're losing hydration pretty fast. Uh, we might want to sleep one more hour, but we still have some hydration. And then we're going to pass time, and I think we'll die in the early parts of the night. We'll probably survive something like four days and, cha and change. So let's see. Uh, we're, going to, we're probably going to die 
maybe around midnight, so maybe four and a half days, maybe, maybe. we'll see. Now, now we're taking 3% damage per hour because of the dehydration. Uh, roar again. Uh, we're getting very close, yeah, let's see. Almost dead, and uh, let's wait. Yeah. Uh, it's practically midnight, let's just round it up and say that by the time I die it's midnight. So in that case it would be four and a half days. Four hours, 12 hours, let's say. Despite having more food and more water than on Pilgrim, we survived less time. And that's just because of the way the meters work <clears throat> and how quickly they drain. And we'll see how it goes on Stalker as well. An interloper though, I think we won't even survive a day. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> Have a little sleep right here. Yeah, we could, but you'll just die. But you're dying anyway. Once more into the breach. Let's look at the light as it fades away. Uh, let's check the departure times. So when does the train to death leave? When is, uh, what's his name? Khan, the boatman. When does he arrive? When does the boat arrive? <laughs> uh, not until later. Okay. Tongue feels like sandpaper. All right, so it is pretty much midnight, I'd say. So I'd say that's how long we survived, pass the time, and die. <clears throat> right, so that was about four and a half hours. Hours, well, four and a half days on Voyager. Uh, well, Pilgrim was about a little bit over five and a half. Call it five and three fourths. So. We survived a little bit more than one day longer on Pilgrim than Voyager. Even though on Voyager we had more food and water resources, which is interesting, isn't it? All right. So let's do Stalker then. All right. So now it's Stalker. This is going to be harder, but we'll see how it goes. Chance to pass again. We will in case. Uh, does it keep it consistent even though it makes no difference? And same thing. Oh, damn, I messed up. I need to do it again. Sorry. No, I need to change it. Sorry. We need to do that again. All right, let's do Stalker. Uh, but again, we have to do Custom. So let's do Stalker. And then again, do Noon and Clear. Just to keep it consistent. And Will and Stalker transfer pass. And let's go. Same thing. Now, I don't think there is a massive difference between Stalker and Voyager. Uh, my impression anyway when I play it is that Stalker is just a slightly milder version than Voyager. It's a little bit more unforgiving that you can't spawn indoors. There's more wolves, uh, you know, animals are more hostile and that sort of thing. But the other than that, like the resources and that sort of thing is not that massively different from Voyager, I suppose. Uh, it's not exactly the same, of course, but still. So let's see how far we get on Stalker then. Uh, so we had, let's just round it a little bit, it's not quite, but we had basically five and a half days on Pilgrim, four and a half days on Voyager. How many days can we survive on Stalker? My guess would be close to Pilgrim, but it depends. But I think we're going to survive like three days or something. We'll see. Now, the interesting part about this is you saw how long I survived on Voyager. A Pilgrim is one thing. A lot of people do play Pilgrim because they like the relaxing exploration experience. And some people play Voyager because they do think Pilgrim is a bit too easy when the animals run away. Uh, but they still want an easy going experience. And I often get people saying like, oh, I'm playing Voyager and on day five and I run out of food and I don't know what to do. Well, if that's the case, just watch this video. And you can see how you can survive almost five days with nothing on Voyager effectively. Of course, you're indoors, of course. And if you can do that with so little resources, you should be able to stretch your run much, much longer than you think. Uh, so, 
you can you can use your resources to your advantage for a long time. All right, so again, uh, there's some minor differences. We're quite cold here. Uh, we're not going to arrive at the place at the exactly the same time. It doesn't matter. Vacant depot. We go inside. And first things first, we check our gear. Less gear than before, but we have matches. One tinder plug. Less supplies, which makes no difference. Gear is all right. Worse than Voyager. We have no food. No food at all. But we spawn with none. So that's a problem. And we have one flare. <clears throat> all right, so let's see. Can we find any food? Let's see what we got here. I could use Parker, this. again, and penicillin, okay. Stacks of paper. Stacks of paper. Played shirt. Book, book, paper, cardboard. We're getting cold. Look how fast we're getting cold here, huh? And the cardboard matches, yeah again, on Stalker. Book, what's in here? Book, no food, so that's going to make sleeping uh, an issue. We're going to die sooner. And cardboard, so <laughs> it seems like on all the lower difficulties you can find a bunch of cardboard matches there. Okay, good to know. A uh, load of books, uh, we got okay water, but we are going to die of hunger though. <clears throat> but even if we have no food, hey, we got maglens again. Talk book. Can't feel my hands. Even if we have no food, we should still survive. Almost four days. Almost, not quite though. Okay, so um, let's make a fire, shall we? Uh, yeah, this is go. We have more books <laughs> than on Voyage, I think. Like eight books or something. But we didn't spawn with wood though. Come on. Alright. Yeah, so we have Turned out pretty well. Yeah, we had eight books. So it's the most books so far. And then we're gonna put all of these on. There's nothing else we really need to do anyway. We can repair if we want to, but Sure, if that's really necessary. Anyway, let's uh, melt the stuff. And rinse and repeat for as long as we can. This is an indoor fire, so it's not going to last very long. We're already running out of it, so we might have to do a Thomasina trick here. Wait for that to dry, I mean melt a little bit. Uh, what's best to repair here? So this will give half a degree, this will give... Uh, less than that. This will give also less than that. This will give a lot, but I think we have to repair the hat, probably. Okay. 19. Let's pass a little bit of time and stop, and then pick up the melted water. Put it back in. Wait for that. And then we will do the same thing. <coughs> Wait till embers. A little bit longer. Uh, till it's 16 there. And there we go. And put that back on. I think embers last about 5 minutes. Or something like that. Oh, you know what? In the Voyager challenge. <laughs> I forgot to drink my unsafe water. I forgot about it. Oh well. It was only like 0 0.06 or something. So it was very little. It would have bought us maybe one hour or something like that. So, you know, it's not really a big deal. Ah, no, that didn't get far enough. Okay, so we got not a lot. Three liters and, and scraps. Same as last time, really. So we have less water. Uh, and now the same thing. Let's repair this hat. Or try to anyway. Oh no, we can't. We can't. <laughs> this time we didn't find the sewing kit, so we can't repair it. So none, none of that. We do have a have a bedroll, which is nice. 
So now we just play the waiting game. Uh, we are cold, but we will be warm with the bedroll, yes. Because it's 100% uh, condition. <coughs> we can also, in a pinch, warm up with this. Uh, because it uh, will give us a slight warmth bonus. And now we just play the waiting game. We don't have any food, so we actually want to sleep while we have hunger this time. Instead of getting our meters low and then healing back up, we need to just basically sleep as much as possible while we still have food in our belly, uh, I guess, to mitigate uh, damage taken, I think. Basically fill up the meters as much as we can. And also, uh, you see the, the calorie drain, uh, 68, so it was, four, uh, first it was 40 or something, so 12 hours on Stalker is 810, not even actually that much, so it was 450 on, on Pilgrim, 720 on Voyager, and as you can see, Stalker is marginally different, it's basically a slightly harder version of Voyager. And let's see if we can sleep... Uh, when we're cold, let's let's do that maybe. So we will, uh, we could take some, we could take some dehydration damage, which can, which can heal up actually, to mitigate some of the water loss. So let's warm ourselves up and take a little bit of damage. Uh, so let's do that, yeah, as long as we can. Past time. Uh, so how long can I sleep? I can sleep nine hours, but I think I want to sleep maybe seven hours or six. Six. So let's get calories down to 400 uh, or so. So around here. Yeah. And now we drink. And then we uh, sleep, which is about six hours, I'd say. Go. This should heal us back up to full. Yeah, may even have, I might have been able to optimize that a bit more, but here we are. Past time. It's getting cold again. And now we just got to rinse and repeat. We do, we're just going to have to see how long we survive. And we're going to warm up because we are getting cold. So let's just keep going. And you can see the water is draining pretty fast. And we have no means of recovery now. So now we're just going to have to drink whenever we can. And let's just keep, keep passing time, really, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, how was your holiday? <laughs> this is an interesting insight into how uh, the meters drain across difficulties. How long can you survive on effectively nothing? Uh, keep keep passing time. We're barely warming up, like marginally warming up, and but we are surviving over a day, and uh, we're all right really. But on Indlope, I'm not sure if we will even survive for one day, not unless we find a flare or something. Okay, now we're going to have to sleep, same as before, we're going to drink, and then sleep for 12 hours. Uh, I might put 11 hours, because I have a suspicion we're going to get like the uh, drain. Yeah, let's do 11 hours. There we are, now the drain has begun. And now it's uh, now, day 22, so basically up to two days in a sec. That's all right. Uh, I might save eat? this water. No, there's no point saving the water. Now we're out of everything. Now it's just a waiting game. And we're going to lo lose more and more health now the more time goes by. Now we're almost cold. Yeah. And now warm up again. It's taking damage to bedroll, but it's fine. We're still warm. 
And we're taking 1% damage per hour still, so we're still doing okay. But very soon we're going to be dehydrated and then it's 3% because it's 1 plus 2. Roughly anyway. So now we're taking 3% per hour. Quite a lot. And then eventually it will, it will be uh, fatigued. And it will be 4% per hour, but we might be dead before then actually. We're marginally warming up. Marginally. And it's just barely. Look at that. <laughs> it is so close. Okay. Keep going. We don't have anything else we can do. And, uh... <clears throat> yeah. We're almost fatigued, so we might have to sleep soon. We might actually survive for three days. It's possible. Okay, now we're, we are fatigued uh, around here. We can sleep six hours, but I think we'll be dead. So let's sleep. Uh, let's sleep two hours. Go from there. All right, two days and twenty-one hours. I think we might actually survive for three days with this. Uh, we're still marginally warming up. Can we make it to three days? I think we might. Maybe, yeah, I think we can. Yeah, I, I think that is three days. Exactly three days. That's pretty good. So three days on Stalker with no food whatsoever. You know, that's not bad. And then a little bit of water and that. Uh, cold, of course, is like a non-issue. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. This is past time here. Yeah. I would say it's uh, three days and maybe one hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it wasn't actually three days because it didn't say, it doesn't say three. It would have been, it would have said three if it was actually three. So, it's actually, it might have been two days and 23 hours 50 minutes or something but let's just round it down in that case two hours and 23 uh, two days 23 hours if you want we could round it up to three days i suppose if we're rounding then uh, yeah we basically survived uh, roughly five and a half days on pilgrim four uh, uh, and a half days on voyager and three days on stalker so you can see how it goes down all right and now, <clears throat> the big challenge, which is not going to go well, we're going to do it on Interloper. And on Interloper, I will be surprised if we survive even one day, because we can't sleep and we don't have any fire. So we're going to just do it anyway, though. We'll do custom, Interloper again, noon and clear. We go in transfer pass, and same thing, Loper TP. And let's go. And Lopa is by far the hardest here. You can survive in Transfer Pass. Um, because it's possible to find flares in the cars. So it is possible to spawn here. And then use the flare to light a fire. And then you go around and you pick up wood and sticks and stuff. And just keep the fire going. And you will survive. But of course you can't really sleep. Uh, if you're very crafty and have enough wood, you can transfer the fire outside to a car and sleep in the car. And in fact, that might be a fun challenge. Let me know if you'd like to see that, if uh, it's possible to survive an interloper spawning here. Uh, it can be done, but you have to be dependent on finding one flare. And uh, yeah, you could always make it so you, you always have a flare. We'll see. <coughs> Uh, an interloper will probably be cold by the time we get there also, as you can see how, how fast it drains by comparison. So Pilgrim is designed for you to be an explorer. You're not really going to get cold. You're just walking around, the, oh, it's cold outside. Yeah, you know, it'll take a while before I freeze, you know. Pilgrim is literally meant for you to breeze through the world and just explore and have fun. Voyager is meant for you to do the same. 
except that there are now threats in the world so you have to work a little bit harder for it um, and then when you get to stalker you actually have an actual challenge you still have the resources of voyager but the wildlife and environment is more brutal so now you actually have a notable chance of dying and then you have Pil uh, interloper which is basically the game just trying to kill you all the time all right so i don't think we can survive more than I think we'll survive like maybe 10 hours at most. So there we are, we are inside, we are cold, we have hardly, this is our entire gear, nothing at all, just a can and some clothing, and that's it. <laughs> Let's see what we got around here. Hey, hockey jersey, how nice. Not a good condition though, but still. What else? New dress shirt, which is... It's actually better than hockey jersey. Yeah, it is. We're not going to grab this thing here. Uh, and here we got... Hey, Fairmont, we got some good stuff. Not going to do anything, though. <laughs> and that's it, really. Yeah. And then no matches at all on Interloper. We got uh, water source. But we don't have any... Um, Never felt so cold in my life. We don't have any anything else so here's the thing we're dead because we don't have any fire we don't have anything we don't have any food nothing so now what's going to happen is we're already cold we are at six degrees so what's going to happen now my friends is i'm going to take 20 percent damage per hour so in about two hours i'll have lost 40 percent of my health and then hypothermia will kick in so i will survive maybe three hours and then we'll actually get hypothermia. And then uh, we'll take 40% damage per hour and then we're dead. You can actually see here. So right now our health, you can actually see it uh, is 97. If you pass for one hour, you'll see you'll be 77-ish. Yeah, 75. It varies. When I tested it, it varies a little bit from anywhere from 19 to 23. Uh, but on average, if you do it enough time, it's rough, roughly 20. I just round it up. You can do it again if you like. 75. Pass another hour. And now it's 54. So it went down 21 or maybe 20 in this case. And this is at 75. So in two hours time, this went up 75%. So yeah, it's like 30... <coughs> 35% per hour, roughly. So if I just do... Uh, one more hour, I will have hypothermia, and there we are, that's our three hours, and now I lose 40% per hour, so it's not even evening, I have survived now for, call it three and a half hours. Now that's something, isn't it? Isn't that something? There aren't even, are there even books in there? Did I find books? No, look, there's not even books in here. So even if I had fire, I couldn't light anything. So yeah, that's it. You, you just can't survive. You need, that's why Interloper is completely different from the other difficulties. Because you don't have the luxury of staying anywhere. Uh, if this was an actual Interloper run, I would immediately start looting everywhere around me and see if I could find any matches or, uh, or flares most likely flares. If I didn't find anything, then the best choice from here as an interloper is to run to the Forsaken airfield and get to the hangar or the control tower where there are matches and use those to warm up and then survive from there. That's the only way to do it, really. Or go to Zone of Contamination. There's more wolves there, though, but you can do that too, and then you can warm up there. So if you don't have fuel and fire, you can survive here in, in Transfer Pass or this region by spawning here, uh, just fine. But in this particular case, let this be an in illustration of the vast cruelty difference between basically interloper and everything else. So in the other three difficulties, there's a reason why I call those difficulties the lower difficulties. Because even though there are differences between them, they are still 
similar in many respects. The meters drain slower, you have more resources, you start with matches, you start with a bedroll, everything is really so much easier. It's just really interloper, it's a really, really cool thing. Uh, so that's why they are called the lower difficulties, really. Uh, they are different, as you could see. The meters drain differently. There's a difference in in, in uh, resource usage, and of course, in Stalker, especially the environment is is harsher. But by comparison to Interloper, it's just so different. And this might be why some people feel that there really should be a difficulty between Stalker and Interloper. But that's what you have custom challenges for, where you can just. Uh, Tweak things as you see fit. So yeah. Well, that's Interloper. I would say we have survived... Four, four hours, so we did pass time three hours. And then for, yeah, call it four hours. Maybe four and a half hours if we're kind. Something like that. I'm gonna say four hours though. Yeah. And that's it. So, slight difference between Interloper and Pilgrim, as you could see. Didn't even survive one day. <laughs> so, that was quite different, wasn't it? <laughs> now, before we go, we're going to do one more thing just out of curiosity. We're going to do another Interloper one. But this time we're going to use a mod to spawn in uh, so, uh, some matches and some uh, some books so that we can basically treat Interloper like it was with, uh, with uh, and a bedroll as well. So the conditions for the Interloper run in this particular case is the same as it was on Stalker, except uh, that uh, you still have the drain of Interloper. So let's say that you 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 came here on interloper and you had matches and some wood and a bedroll but nothing else how long would you survive so let's find that out and again interloper just to be clear interloper a noon and clear so let's go our territory transfer pass and this is uh loper loper plus tp yeah whatever let's go All right, so let's go. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run into the depot, but once I get to the depot, I'm going to activate a mod that gives my character a, let's say it's a, uh, some some matches, um, maybe f five, five books and a bedroll and that's it. And then the conditions in terms of the resources will be similar to what it was in uh, the lower difficulties. And despite that, I am pretty sure we're not going to survive very long because the cold is going to be an issue once again. I don't think the bedroll will be enough to mitigate the cold and not for very long. We'll probably survive for longer than four hours but we are still going to die. We might survive like, uh, I don't know, eight hours, 10 hours, we'll see. So what we're basically doing now is we're simulating as if you were an interloper. Let's say you spawned nearby, you ran around, you found some matches, you found the bedroll, you found some wood, and then you ended up here. What happens in that case? Okay. Good old ptarmigans, so I can hear the ptarmigans. Yeah, panting will. Let's go. And here we are. So this time, uh, we're going to now, I'm going to activate the mod and I'm going to spawn in some items. So bear with.
All right, so now I used the mod and I spawned in a bedroll, some matches, and five books. So now it's similar to what it is on the lower difficulties. We don't have any tinder, but we got tinder here, as well as, uh, uh, there's probably some more tinder around here. Uh, if for some reason I can't start the fire, I'll just uh, spawn in some tinder as well. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so let's loot around first. Shoes, which are probably worse, I guess, yep. Uh, over here. Nothing, and here. Sewing kit, isn't that something? And water, hardly any water. And in here, I don't think there was anything. Cold is making my head feel thick. No. Okay, let's start a fire. If I fail, I need more tinder. I'll just spawn in some tinder. And now we're simulating what it's like on the lower difficulties. So, now it's interloper, but we were able to start a fire and put a few books on there. So, I think it was Stalker. I had eight books, was it? On Voyager, I had six plus Cedar, and on Pilgrim, I had five. So, uh, yeah. So, it's... Uh, I hurt a little bit, but it's mostly how it's going to be utilized. So we're going to use all our books, and this might actually heat us up. So now we have survived. Now this was a real interloper challenge, and I actually did this, and I actually found fire, <clears throat> and I could do this. Now while this was uh, melting, I would absolutely go outside and find some more wood. Uh, and there's wood around here, of course, but so go and find sticks. There's, there's no wolves around here, so go and find sticks and wood and cattails. Grab some stones, grab some ptarmigan, grab some uh, rabbits and this and that. And then come back here and put the fuel on the fire. Or even make a fire outside if we want to. <clears throat> and just try and get as much fuel as possible to stay warm. And uh, if this was a really interloper run, though, I wouldn't have this. Uh, uh, that wouldn't work, but you could sleep in the car, or I would probably just get as much resources as I could and then head into a second airfield, or, or maybe some of contamination. All right, so we is there anything to repair really? Uh, we our, our equipment is pretty crap, and the only thing we can really repair are the shoes that requires harvesting these, which is going to take forever. We might do it later just for the fun of it, but oh well. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Oh, you know, in the Stork one, uh, I forgot to drink my dysentery water again, but well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, let's just keep doing this, and we're not going to get a lot of water, as you can see. Uh, those books will be enough to get me pretty much a liter of water, and then that's it. So we And we have no food, so we're not going to survive very long. And we're going to get cold, too. Let's see. And then we're going to do the Thomasina trick for the rest. Uh, wait until there's embers. And then it's warm now, but it's not going to stay warm. So I think, I'm pretty sure that even with the uh, the bedroll, uh, we're going to be cold. Yeah, for, here, for here it's minus 7, see? So the best we can do is mitigate it. But we are going to freeze to death, no matter what. We just don't have the resources to stay warm. So we're going to have to hug our bedroll. And mitigate this cold damage as much as we can. And you see the cold is the real killer here in, um, in Interloper. See? <clears throat> the water is not really going to do anything. We're going to die before we can drink it. You do um, get dehydrated very fast though in Interloper. You think you have to drink about 3 liters a day. But yeah. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, we got that. And I think, yeah. Now we're just going to have to hug this. We're warm now, but that's not going to last. See, we're already getting cold. And see, it's minus two, and it's draining pretty fast. And now we're already cold. Once we are cold, the bedroll makes no difference. Because now, it doesn't. once you are cold, it doesn't matter anymore if it's minus one or minus 200. You are already cold. You already have the hypothermia risk. And now, the only real difference is that now it's almost um, evening, and now the damage begins. We can drink water, because we will get dehydrated if we don't. And then we can pass time, but now we are dead. Again, 
we're dead in about four hours and we have survived almost five I, I don't know exactly but I would say that when the horizon when the uh, horizontal beams hit the horizon it should be six hours so if we do like this and wait until there this should be roughly six hours I believe and then when the moon is at the top it's 12 hours and then when the sun is on the other side it's 18 hours and then at the noon it's 24 hours now we are at 50 here uh we will and our health is what 67 so 40 so we will survive maybe two or three more hours so let's do let's just pass some time here let's, let's do one hour at a time so call that seven hours and now we get eight hours there we go okay eight hours now hypothermia so eight hours and change but we are dying very very fast now so <clears throat> so you can see on a normal interop run because of the cold <laughs> you do this challenge and you survive for four hours if you basically treat interloper as if it was a stalker run where you have the bedroll and you have fire you're still dead it just takes eight hours instead of four because you just don't have any means to stay warm but again if this was a really interloper run of course i would go out and grab wood and i would stay warm as long as possible and you can easily survive much much longer i might do that in the future just uh survive in transfer pass for as long as possible just for the fun of it sure but we'll see okay so let's see how we get on here rest soon well i would say there's probably some minutes change here but i'm gonna call this eight hours and uh that's it so interlope is a whole nother ball game you need that warmth otherwise you're just straight up dead and that's it and there we go we faded into long dark yet again and that was interloper plus let's call it interloper with uh training wheels <laughs> okay and another way you could you could do that if you if you want to if you want to do this yourself if you want to try this out you don't have to use the mod like i did what you can do instead is you go on custom and then you do uh interloper but you set the loot to a uh, stalker so stalker here is medium here so you just go on interlope and put this on medium uh and also like starting gear is somewhere as in a starting gear uh starting gear allocation right put that to medium i guess uh or maybe even high put it on high and if you now spawn i think you might even spawn with a bedroll let's just have a quick look uh so now uh yeah so now you spawn with a bedroll and you spawn with matches too so if you want to do this yourself you don't have to use the mod that i actually kind of forgot about this you could just do this instead just do interloper but put on the uh baseline availability different and you will spawn with this and then you have basically it's in still interloper but you spawn with gear akin to stalker and that's actually quite a good challenge to do and that's one of the most common custom challenges that people do. Uh, they have a <clears throat> interloper run with stalker modifications on. They play on the interloper settings, but they add the stalker gear and they also add rifles. And then you get kind of like gun loper with, uh, with more gear. And that is still brutal in terms of it, the environment, but at least the rest of it is more controllable and you even spawn with a bedroll so if you think that stalk is too easy and interlope is too difficult this is a very good intermediate uh, difficulty where you basically do interloper with stalker gear and then, uh, then that's a bit easier so yeah <clears throat> if you want to do it just do that you don't have to use the mod okay okay with that fellow survivors uh as you can see from this little case study here which uh for real data, for real reliable conclusions, we should ideally make it even simpler uh, or even more similar across difficulties. And it should be done multiple times per difficulty to average out the survival time 
because it varies what you spawn with and what you find. But on such a small area like this, the variation is very small. So I don't think it makes too much difference. But the main takeaway from this is that as you can see, on the lower difficulties, you can survive for a really, really long time with the resources you have, provided you stay um, warm. <clears throat> on the interloper, we, we just couldn't stay warm, so we just died. But if we had been able to stay warm, if we had gear that was good enough to actually stay warm, then we still would have died fairly quickly. We would have probably survived maybe one or, or at best two days. I could have maybe done that too, but I don't think it makes a difference. Because the idea is that um, uh, <clears throat> an interloper, you need warmth really very fast. And if we had had the warmth, we still had no food and we had very little water and it drains much faster than the other difficulties. So we probably, if we had stayed warm on interloper, we probably would have survived the day but not much more than that, maybe a day and a half or something like that. So an interloper, you have to go for warmth and shelter right away. You, you can't stay put, you got to keep moving. On the lower difficulties though, you can stay put. As you saw on Stalker, we had no food. Yet despite that, we survived for three days. And just pretty much just standing there. And then on the other difficulties, we survived for several days. So just remember that your resources can be stretched really far. If you're able to sleep, then you want to use that to your advantage. You want to save the resources you got until you can sleep. And when you do, you will heal back up. In the meantime, just starve and dehydrate yourself. Save it for when you sleep and then heal back up. And you can really stretch your resources really, really far. And uh, yeah, so that was interesting. You can survive uh, five and a half, almost six days on Pilgrim with uh, almost nothing. Uh, about uh, four and a half days on Voyager, three days on Stalker, and a few hours on Interloper. If we had had a fire uh, on Interloper, or gear enough to stay warm, yeah, we could have survived maybe a day and a half, maybe two at the most. I don't, even, I don't think two days, though. But it would be unrealistic, though. You would never be in that sort of situation, uh, except uh, if you find an indoor location with a loading screen, then you would uh, be warm, of course. But then if you find such a location, you would warm up and keep moving. You wouldn't really stay put anyway. So so that was it. That was this little case study. By no means perfect. I'm a scientist by trade and there's lots of errors and, and limitations in this little test. But I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. And uh, aside from this and that, that could have been done and polished and this and that, uh, the main takeaway here is that really you can survive longer than you think if you just use the little resources you have to your utmost advantage. Heal up when you can and just stretch it as far as possible and you can survive really long on the lower difficulties. While on interloper you got to keep moving and you got to find warmth. It's a whole nother ball game interloper. That said, I think that's it for now. Thank you survivors and I'll see you next time. Survive well out there. Bye bye.